hello. Today's November 10th. We're doing robot nonsense. Wow. Wow. Right to it. Got him. Happy Friday, everybody. And we got a hot new feature. If you are a chat GPT user, if you're one of the paid users, that is, you can now give chat GPT. I love how you keep going to your cup and like and every time nothing in it. <laughs> Like I need, I need my caffeine, but I've already, uh, I'm already topped up on caffeine. Uh, could that be a sign of addiction? Yeah, mm. a little bit. I was never able to give up my tea or my coffee. Same. But uh, yeah, ChatGPT can now uh, review all of your documents as well. ChatGPT Plus members can upload and analyze files in the latest beta. <laughs> you can the, train new versions of ChatGPT. <laughs> with the uploading of PDF, uh, suddenly a bunch of startups cried out and they were silenced. <laughs> So text and images and PDFs and stuff, it can deal with all of them. Pretty amazing. It definitely is using that to train itself, though, so keep that in mind. Don't upload your tax documents. And Brave, Brave for a little while was my uh, go-to browser because of a certain company deciding to change the way that ad blockers work. But now everything's fine. However, I do appreciate what they do, and this is an interesting new feature they've added. Brave responds to Bing and ChatGPT with a new anonymous and secure AI chatbot. Anonymous and secure is in quotes because we don't know. But Leo is built into Brave for desktop users with mobile plan. Uh, eventually, they're going to do a $15 a month fee for this, though. Oh, my gosh. But they promise that what you talk to it about will not be used in the training data and it will not be exported for other reasons to be data mined and so forth. It'd be even better if it could run locally. I've been experimenting with uh, Whisper, which is the model that does speech to text and it all runs locally and it is shockingly good which makes it really easy to index video for searching look they fixed it they fixed the thumbnails oh nice maybe so, there's just like a issue on our end <laughs> the browser no. uh, well maybe oh well i've jumped the gun on this one go ahead microsoft is making a mess of the news after replacing staff with ai uh, this article is specifically about uh, a news story where somebody died and in this story they speculated about the method which the person died. And so the AI said, oh, this is, oh yeah, Microsoft accused of damaging the Guardian's reputation with an AI generated poll. Yeah. So, so the poll was, this woman died. And then the AI generated poll was like, oh, I know what I'll, I, let's give an engagement poll. An engagement challenge. <laughs> How do you think she died? And that was think, insensitive. <laughs> and I think one of the options was self unaliving. So her family <laughs> had to see that. And then it was like, really guys, come on. But the, the the guardrails on the thing couldn't say the thing, so yeah. it was just like, eh. if that if that if I was the person in the article who'd passed and I saw that poll, I wouldn't want my family to be mad. You'd be dead. Yeah, I'd want them to laugh. I want them. I want them to have a good time when I'm dead. Are you gonna be one of those people that has a fun funeral? Well, I would. Well, I mean, I'd like that, but I'm not gonna be around, so I can't. Well, force you can, it. Like, you know, like set some money aside. Yeah. Put, put some paper. <laughs> want my corpse to be lowered from the ceiling and then a disco ball <laughs> the only thing that matters at the funeral is that there's a disco ball yeah here's what you do that's some pump and bass have your like have the skin removed from your corpse mm. and then like you know taxidermied it's and then just filled with candy <laughs> and you could be a pinata <laughs> well the ai versus the copyright holders continues to rage on and these court cases are continuing to we're not really having the cases yet we're at the phase where it's like well i'm gonna let you go forward with this and not this and so forth judge pairs down an artist ai copyright lawsuit against mid-journey and stability ai basically threw out a bunch of the claims but says well maybe if your work was misappropriated for the training data then maybe you might have some kind of a claim maybe this is actually the same story. I'm going to skip this. If you're following along at home, I'm skipping that one because it's the same story, but it does have some more details. And every week we have a new celebrity who is coming forward to join the battle. Scarlett Johansson hits AI app with a legal action for cloning her voice in an ad. This they one was pretty egregious. Yeah, they didn't just clone her ad. They implied it was her. It's like, hey, you can... <laughs> And then at the bottom in small print, it was like not actually Scarlett Johansson. Yeah, well, they, they had like the first part of the video was her talking to the camera from like some interview she had done a long time ago. And then they cut and then it was just her voice over B-roll. But it was her her voice quote. Yeah, this was egregious. And this, I don't think we, you would even allow this without AI. right? Yeah. If you just somehow managed to get someone that sounded like her, but it said it was her, this would not be tolerated. And her, her lawyers have won against Disney in the past. So a strong team. Yeah. 
But oh, yeah, I remember the Disney people tried to strong arm her, and, and she was like, "Hell no!" I like her; she's yeah. good. That's I mean, good. her lawyers are great. I don't know who she hired for that, but well, her lawyer team, her legal team is unparalleled. But the team that was running this particular shop were not lawyers, but they also were not good at making smoothies. It seems an AI smoothie shop opened in San Francisco without with much hype, but it already shut down. Because it was powered by AI. It was going to be your nutrition in, in the thing. And it was all just smoke and mirrors and no one cared. And also San Francisco is really kind of a challenge. Yeah, they went out of their way not to mention the fact that maybe San Francisco, not the best place for a smoothie shop. Well, they they pointed out that there were other st- things around that like sold the smoothies for cheaper. And also like the inconsistent hours. And apparently some of the smoothies were not that good. Right. Oh, can we? we there oh, were, it, lady. Oh. There's a great picture here. Look uh, closely at yeah. Green Shirt Man. Because he is missing a finger. Also, the fruit is just kind of blobs in a lot of the images. <laughs> it's like, hmm. These are their AI-generated... Uh, the, the AI-generated reviews. Those aren't real clicks. <clears throat> and we learned that Cruz uh, was kicked out of San Francisco. Because their car may have accidentally run somebody over, their driverless car. That seems to have been more than they could take because now it's not just San Francisco. Cruise and GM's robo-taxi service suspends all driverless operations nationwide because they had problems. That's going to set that industry back a bit, isn't it? And, uh, Chris, you have detailed your struggle with the, uh, what is it? Uh, squash bugs. Squash bugs, right. Yeah. How are you doing this year? I didn't plant squash at all this year to see if maybe they move on. Oh, so you've lost. I've lost to this year. Well, I lost pretty big last year as well. Maybe there's hope. A new Pied Piper robot protects Oregon's vineyards from pests with good vibes. It's not actually good vibes. So what they're trying to do... And I say trying to do because I don't think they've figured it out yet. Is they're trying to mimic the mating call of the female bug. And the idea is to blanket your entire crop with that sound so that the male bugs don't know what to do. They're like, there's hot milfs everywhere. And I don't know where to go. I'm trying to chase them. But when I get there, there's nothing. And I I can't. And they have a, a short breeding period where they're the most fertile. I think it's like three days. So they figure if they can confuse these bugs for three days, they'll drop 90% of the eggs. What type of bug did it say in this article what they were, what they were doing that with? Yes. He did mention it because he was like testing one of them, but I don't remember exactly what it was. Because I had a little bit of an issue with Japanese beetles this year, which is an invasive species. And one of the things that they've tried to do, like they suggest is like, you can get traps for them. The issue is it's that same idea where it's like, it'll just attract all the males and then they get caught by the trap. But the issue is eventually the trap's full and you're still attracting. The brown marmorated stink bug, obviously. Oh, we actually have stink bugs quite a bit here. Have you ever noticed in the fall they pop up everywhere? Yeah, my cats will chase them for hours when they get in the house. And they're slow and they're not good at getting away. They're the perfect cat toy. Mm. Cricket hasn't seen any yet. He loves moths, though. And moving into the space section, this is not a space story per se. It's kind of nonsense a little bit. But it is a fun story about, you know, communist control and how important it is to keep the man at the top happy. Russia renamed its ambitious satellite program after Putin misspoke its name. Sfera. Okay. That wasn't originally what it was named, but it's like, like okay. Like But Well, it's Russian. Russian. It's Russian for sphere. Mm. But it was called something else. And, uh... He gave a speech and just got it wrong. And they point out by the time he got back to his office and he was like, oh, I got that wrong. They were like, no, you didn't because it had already been renamed and all mentions of the old name were gone. If I was the graphic designer on that project and I got like a message, (laughs) like, you know, you're eating your lunch, it's Friday. And then you see that and it's like, you have to like go through and change all your files. Final, final, final for real this time. Like not only do you have to change them, you have to change them right now. Yeah. I've already outlined the fonts. That's annoying. Well, that's annoying, but we do have some good space news. However, I was a little underwhelmed after reading this because you look at the picture and you think, oh my that's God, be incredible. all of our sci-fi dreams, but not really. Sci-fi inspired tractor beams are real and could solve a major space junk problem. So they're, they're lasers to 
move things around a little. Well, they're going to blast charged electrons oh. at space junk. And then they're going to have the opposite charge on the vehicle that's blasting. So they figure up to, I think it was like 120 feet or something like that. They could haul it without making physical contact. Neat. Is this just a, a vehicle for money, startup money? It feels like, I know things bumping together in space is a big problem, but can you just get like a space rope? <sighs> There's a, a quote in this article that's like, oh yeah. Nothing else in your life matters when you're experiencing kidney stone pain. Can't confirm. <laughs> this, is, this is Ryan bait. Kidney stone breakthrough procedure at UW called a game changer for patients. It's ultrasonics. So this is actually an improvement over certain kinds of kidney stones were treatable with ultrasonics, but now basically everything can be treated with ultrasonics and they can just move them on out of there once they break them up. Why does this matter? Why is this in the space section you say? Well, because in space, everybody gets kidney stones. Really? Yeah. Interesting. There was an episode of House where they were down in like, if he was remotely treating a patient in Antarctica and they thought she had kidney stones, and they were trying to use geological equipment to break them up like that. Didn't work. <laughs> Why was House in Antarctica? He wasn't. He was at his hospital, but oh, he was remotely sure. treating someone. Well, it doesn't get more remote than Antarctica unless it's this oh. and what a great thing because like think about all of the most powerful people in history none of them could ever dream of something like this but you possibly could if you're young enough design revealed for space toilet with a view so this this is a tourism a space tourism company that's going to take people to the edge of space and the thing that's part of the space tourism thing needs a toilet for people so they said hey why don't we put a why don't we put the bathroom in with a window that would be amazing while you're pooping to be looking down at the world. But you have to remember that this is not like, you know, you're just sitting on the bowl having a, a nice time. It's still the vacuum hose. Ugh. So probably don't want to spend as, you don't want to linger. No. You don't want to sit and look at your phone. <laughs> Man, I tell you, I just lost track of time while I had that hose up my butt. <laughs> <laughs> and so this is another one that's tailored toward me because I feel like I should be the most highest achieving human being in the world. <laughs> and yet, I don't know. I'm not getting this. Anger can lead to better results when tackling tricky tasks, according to this study. So Anakin Skywalker, not, Anakin Skywalker was right. It's like I, anger doesn't lead to anger. Just is better management. I feel like anger is maybe good as like a starting point of like, I want to fix this because I'm mad about it. But I feel like mm. if I'm already in the middle of a project and I get angry about something, it just distracts me. So the experiment was you had to solve an anagram, the jumbled word. And uh, they would show you pictures that are supposed to make you feel a certain way. And uh, anger was the most productive hmm. in terms of that. Also, anger was the second most likely to make you try to cheat. Number one most likely to make you try to cheat was fun, funny pictures. Oh. If you're in a, like a, a a laughable mood, you're just like, eh, nothing matters. <laughs> I'll cheat. <laughs> this might as well happen. I, I will say there was a couple puzzles in Baldur's Gate later in the game where I was just like, I got to a point and I was like frustrated with it. I was like, I'm just looking this up. I don't care anymore. <laughs> Well, one thing that would make everybody angry, I think, is if we were to uh, blind ourselves accidentally. FDA warns of infection risk from 26 big brand eye drops. Stop using them immediately. No infections have yet been linked, but the FDA found contamination in a manufacturing facility. Is this the one in India or is this a different one? That's right here in the United States, Krista. Wow. Yeah, if you got store brand eye drops, <sighs> throw it away. But they're such a deal. <laughs> yeah, you're putting the mold spores directly into your eyes. It's not... It's not fabulous. Now, Lego, a lot of people could get upset if you say Legos. My yeah. husband corrected me the other day because oh. I said Legos. You're going to keep doing that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they are great. They're great, you know, for the kids, teach them to focus and everything. And one customer base that I'm sure they're aware of, but I never considered, of course, would be meth heads, right? Because <laughs> you got that laser focus to build your blocks. Huge Lego collection and boxes of gemstones seized by Victoria Police and alleged meth lab raid. <laughs> the Legos were still more valuable than the gemstones. You just did it. I did. I can't. Sorry. <laughs> Stop yelling at me. 1,300 boxes. So they actually would have to bring a truck in. Madness. 
This guy was cooking meth and building fun projects. For ages zero to one, was it 99 or 100? <laughs> And we see a lot of uh, police impersonation these days. People seem obsessed with that. This is not exactly no. what's going on here. They are definitely going to come down hard on this guy when they find him. Uh, it could be a gal, I guess. But I don't think there's been any attempt to actually like pull people over. This is just fun. Yeah. yeah. Officials warn of a booty patrol truck they say is impersonating a border patrol vehicle. So it's booty patrol done up in the style of border <laughs> patrol. This has got to be just like a Halloween thing, right? Come on. I saw a... Uh... A Jeep the other day that had a skeleton on the back of it for Halloween, like on the wiper, so it would. <laughs> so here's Booty Patrol, and then there is the Border Patrol. It's pretty similar. But he doesn't have the. Oh, he does have. The, oh, he's got the he's seal. He's got the stripe. That's oh. what's going to get him. I don't know, though, because uh, Steve Wozniak had the Department of Defiance ID. And uh, the logo on it said Department of Defiance. And he there was there were a lot of people, like he would fly with that ID, which was apparently fine to fly with. And uh, at least, you know, before all the stuff. And, <laughs> before you know, everything of and, the last 20 years. And, you know, being someone be wealthy beyond the dreams of avarice, he didn't right. care when he was detained yeah. for hours and hours and hours. No, you just, you just figured out why they didn't bother him, too. <laughs> yeah. And so, like, he would be detained for hours and hours and hours. And he's like, you're wrong, but... You know, we can waste all, we can waste my day and yours too. And then later they would be like, I hate you. It's funny. We can all live vicariously through the laws. Uh, even if I had that level of money, I don't think I would do that. <laughs> I also wouldn't do this, which doesn't seem like it's going to come to fruition, which is probably good for everybody. Tech billionaire's quest to build a new city in California is already mired in trouble. I don't think that tech billionaires idea of what it takes to build a city for normal citizens is, is a thing that should exist in reality. So what they've come up against here, which apparently they were not prepared for is that these farmers don't want them there and aren't <laughs> willing to sell their land. So they actually pulled off some nasty things where they like, well, Bob next on the parcel over here, he's already agreed to sell. Bob had not. So they were lying and they were trying to, turn the farmers against one another. But again, I don't think the tech billionaires understand that these are close knit communities. Yeah. They talk to each other and they're prepared. They're clearly not on the local Facebook group where everyone shit talks. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bezos come by here again. Can you? <laughs> and Seattle has done almost everything wrong in the past recent, you know, like the uprising and trying to change the world. But this one, finally, they've done one that I agree with. <laughs> How is this in the world's greatest democracy, quote unquote, I get it. How do we not have this everywhere? New first in the nation policy limits Seattle police from knowingly lying. Think about that headline, which is perfectly accurate, by the way. <laughs> first in the nation policy limits Seattle police from knowingly lying. Are you implying that cops would just go into a crime scene and tell lies? This is not even that. They can still lie to you in the interrogation room. That doesn't change here. They can only not lie to you during press releases and when they're trying to control a crowd, which apparently they were doing a bunch of. Well, that's not surprising. <laughs> we don't have any body cam footage. And we see these over and over, but apparently in Europe, it's a bigger problem even than it is here. Italian woman wins a court case to evict her two sons aged 40 and 42. It's like, look, you have to go. It's time to go. How many years do you think it's been that she's been saying that? And they're just like, ah, oh, mom, come on. It's hilarious because you would think that like they were just neats and sitting at home. They were both employed. They just refused to put any money toward the house or the groceries or like they just went and spent their own money and let mom take care of everything else. That's just unbelievable to me. That's I, how do you, I guess maybe they'd never lived anywhere else, but like surely if you've even had just a roommate, like they point out, I don't know. I don't know if they did the U S but the average age in Italy to move out of the home is 30. Wow. Yeah. And it was higher in some other countries. It's weird to me that, and maybe I'm misunderstanding something here cause now I'm getting old, but like I had roommates for a long time in my twenties. So like, is that not common anymore? Do young people just not do the roommate thing? I definitely did that. Yeah. That was some good times too. Yeah. It was, well, like it's the only way you could afford to move out. It was like, Oh, I just live with some random people. Yeah. I don't know, but 
uh, some countries have more of a family oriented. Yeah. Like we're individual, individual liberty. Like that's our sort of mindset. I mean, I wish it was. It used to be. But in some places, it's like, no, it's just a family unit. I mean, Eastern Kentucky has a little bit of that. Where it's like, the you know, family stuff? Yeah, yeah, everyone lives, you know, yeah. on one plot of land and there's like 10 trailers. Yeah, I didn't really go for that in my family, which people just didn't understand. Yeah, also was like, I have to get out of here. Well, uh, once again, we go to Canada to find another insanely draconian law about you not criticizing your superiors. Township's proposed, quote, quote unreasonable behavior policy blasted as unreasonable. <laughs> <laughs> this was great. So if you complain too much or you usurp the time of your public servants so they can't be doing valuable things like trampling on your freedoms, they can then just simply ignore you because you're being quote unquote unreasonable. Can I do that? Some possible <laughs> things that you could do to make them angry. Uh, making excessive demands, uh, contacting several representatives about the same issue Demanding immediate responses, attempting to reopen matters that have already been determined. Yeah, this, this this sounds like just leave us alone. Yeah, I mean, there's probably people who have taken it to an extreme. Like, I can imagine someone being, like, upset because, you know, they moved a park bench and then they just won't leave it alone. But, I mean, that's what the, the public people are there for. Yeah. That's the job. Kind of like dealing why, with the public. Why do we need you if not for this? And we've learned that uh, if you DoorDash and you don't tip, they can't be responsible for whatever crazy results you get. And something like this might happen. <laughs> Grubhub driver claims delivering a cup of urine instead of milkshake was, quote unquote, an accident. Oh. Customer noticed the mistake after taking oh. a sip. How do you not notice it's warm? <laughs> oh, it's, he, put, he had a straw in it. It was yeah. probably one of those uh, like Chick-fil-A style cups. Insulated. Yeah. Oh, yeah. How do you not notice the smell? Straw. Surely it would waft through the he, straw. He said the delivery driver was still there. So he called him out on it. Chick-fil-A milkshake, literally. But here's the thing about it. You immediately feel mortified if you're that driver. I guess, but here's the thing. They gave him a refund on the food, but not the delivery fee or the tip. Mm. It was like a $26 order. He got $17 back. Mm. Wow. Yeah. For drinking piss. You will drink this. <laughs> you will be happy. <laughs> We're we can't that use that as a title. No. <laughs> uh, speaking uh, of that. Yeah, no. that's apparently a trend. Uh, the second biggest beer producer in China is said that it's probing a viral video that appears to show a man peeing into a container of ingredients. Oh. <laughs> I watched the video and it was just, he was so leisurely about it. <laughs> it's just like, like ah. what do you mean? This is how the beer gets its flavor. <laughs> They said they're looking into it. They have sealed that vat. It wasn't beer being brewed. It was like one of the precursor ingredients. Well, but well that makes it better. It was but malt. they're going to test it. Could you even find that level of concentration? It was a giant vat. <laughs> well, we've learned that uh, HBO Max wants you to upgrade from the old legacy plan <clears throat> or else they're going to strip away all of your uh, special features. But not just that. They really don't like it when critics don't enjoy their shows. <laughs> HBO bosses used quote unquote secret fake accounts to troll TV critics. There's some pretty good evidence of that here in this. You should read that for the lulls. It's funny. I think every major streaming platform does this. I think it's tech, everywhere. I think tech companies troll people that make YouTube videos as well. Like there's people inside tech companies that definitely are trolling everybody else. So this is not an uncommon thing. So some of the people guilty of this weren't necessarily like they didn't want to be part of it, but at, whenever he would read something he didn't like, he needed somebody other than him and his alt accounts. So he would say, we need somebody who can go on a mission. <laughs> that makes it sound like it's a fun journey, D&D &D style. I don't want to do this. It's not that at all. Going on a mission meant just lashing out at yeah. a critic on Twitter. Fabulous. These are the, it's always the people that get in the charge of these like high ranking positions. They are so petty. Yeah, that's, I just don't understand it. Like, especially too, if you're making a piece of art, which arguably not all shows are, but ideally that's what a show should be like. Not everyone's going to like it. Why would you lash out at every single person? Like, that makes no sense to uh, me. Because you're a man child. I guess. And if you're a man child, maybe you would still enjoy the wiggles. 
but most people don't, and that's been weaponized. <laughs> the headline is Wake Up Bunbury. The Wiggles demand council stop blaring hot potato 24-7 at the homeless. So this is one of those dystopian things where the homeless are gathering somewhere you don't want them, and so they're using a song from the Wiggles in order to drive the homeless people crazy so they don't congregate there. Are the Wiggles still popular? That, that would be irrelevant in this scenario. I, I mean, guess, yeah, do you need popular? I just hadn't, th- I haven't thought about the Wiggles in years. I... <laughs> they used, uh, was it Baby Shark? And uh, Baby Shark was the really annoying one for a while. What's the name of the terrorist jail in Cuba? Guantanamo. Yeah, they used Baby Shark in Guantanamo wow. for sleep deprivation. They also used Metallica, and Metallica complained about it. <laughs> And uh, it's a new month, which means that this man has recycled once again and refreshed. It's not really recycling so much as just... Discarding. Yeah. Leonardo DiCaprio's new girlfriend wasn't even born when Titanic was released. <laughs> She's 25. Well, it's pretty surprising he's dating her at all. Doesn't he usually dump him by 25? All <laughs> the comments we're talking about. Yeah. It's like, oh, this one's not going to last more than six months. This, this one at least had a comment from somebody that knows DiCaprio and said, hey, listen, if they're in love, you know, whatever. They're not was, in love, though. No, it was the last one. Yeah, yeah. They they went to the last one for comment, and she actually kind of defended him. Yeah. A lot of people are like, why does Leonardo DiCaprio date such young girls? And I can't imagine how you don't understand this. The reason that he does is because he can. <laughs> Do you know how many 48-year-old men would date that girl if they could? Girls all are better of, than that. All of the heterosexual ones. Literally all of them. And maybe he should go after this girl. Although I think she's actually a little long in the tooth, isn't she? She's I mean, probably, for what he usually yeah, goes she's, for. she's already aged out of the DiCaprio <laughs> bracket. I'm sure she's... <laughs> <laughs> the, the Dextero headline is Amaranth Reveals Beer Company Wants Her Pap Smear to Brew New Flavor. Is she implying she's yeasty? Yeah, well, oh. I mean... Well, I think, you know, everybody is. To, or all the all the ladies are to some degree. And you only need a little bit to get it going Ugh. and multiply it. So, I, I'm sure the it doesn't The internet happen. was a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, brilliant marketing, I guess. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <It's> just <laughs> Lactobacillus. Not maybe, yeast. Maybe we should all just know less about each other <laughs> we should just log off the internet for the <laughs> rest of the day and elon musk is one of those uh people in power who's completely just petty and he's got so much money that he can actually throw it around elon musk offers a billion dollars to wikipedia if they'll change their name why we can't because, say <laughs> because uh uh yeah <laughs> So they said some stuff. Now he claims that his Wikipedia article is not true. Yeah. And he and Jimmy Wales don't really like one another, I guess. So he said he would give them that billion if they would change their name and pull down all the lies on his Wikipedia article and tell the truth. Now, remind me again what happened when Elon Musk promised to pay the legal bills of anybody that... uh... (laughs) I don't think we've seen an example yet, have we? I'm sure some people have applied. Uh, more than a few people have applied. I don't think anyone has been accepted into that program. Listen, he's busy doing whatever it is he does all day, which is mostly just shit post on Twitter. <laughs> now, we, we covered this exact same story, but not about fruit flies. But there's an important reason it's in the nonsense. Well, we have a terrible immigration problem in this country, <laughs> let me tell you. And it's not the one you're thinking of. Millions of fruit flies will be dropped on Los Angeles. Why? Because these fruit flies are sterile, and they'll hopefully kill the uh, the plague, the pestilence of fruit flies currently in Los Angeles, not, as it were. Are these sterile? I think this is just our native version. I think they're just trying to crowd yeah, out. Yeah, it says they're sterile oh, okay. in the headline. There. Oh, are they? Okay. Yep, sterile male fl- fruit flies. In so the they're going to use area. the yeah. Th- but these are uh, not local fruit flies. These have are invasive. And ours are of a more harmless, for less likely to carry disease variety. I mean, if I'm a fruit fly and you're going to drop, you know, thousands of women who can't become pregnant, that sounds like a party to me. It says they're male, <laughs> sterile males. Oh, well, that's that's fine. Too. Oh, actually, no, that's just going to be a bunch of dudes competing for the same thing. <laughs> that's a nightmare. That's China. <laughs> And a fun pig story. You can't get enough of these. 
A Pennsylvania pig named Kevin Bacon has captured was finally captured with a sticky bun filled with Benadryl after 18 days on the, on the run. This is like something that would pop up on my we, feed about my little local town. Like, we finally caught that pig! I'm pretty sure that we covered this story a couple of times because this isn't the first time this pig has escaped. And so now the owners have actually put a concrete foundation in his pen so he can't dig out. Wow. And Kevin Bacon, the real Kevin Bacon, on Twitter weighed in and gave his support to the pig. Not for his escape, but just... <laughs> he deserves freedom! <laughs> And uh, I was at, you know, I, I guess I never really looked into tarantulas, but remember the film Arachnophobia? Yeah. That led you to believe that tarantulas had venom. Yeah. They don't. No. They're My just, childhood is ruined. They're just spooky looking. Tarantula sighting in, results in a car accident in Death Valley National Park. A car swerved to avoid a tarantula that could apparently be seen from some distance away, which caused it to, oh, it signed on the brakes actually, and then a motorcycle hit it from behind. Motorcycles falling too close. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. How crazy to stop to keep from running over a tarantula. What a nature lover. <laughs> I didn't know what it was. It was so large. I thought it was a cat. <laughs> An eight legged cat. Yeah. <laughs> and uh geese, they're criminals in the animal world. They're mean. But we still have to love them and respect them. <laughs> Enhance Hork. Artificial intelligence can now ID individual geese from the sound of their honk. But can it make the ducks at the pond next door feel better when a goose shows up? I don't think it's the sound, is it? I think it's visual. I thought it was the sound. No, because... Doesn't uh, it imply in the headline that it's the sound? It does sound like that. But they explain how the directors of the like goose study thing... The students had a fun game every year where they would take pictures of the geese without name labels and show them. And most of the professors could get them all. Wow. One guy missed one, but it was because there were two sisters. He mixed them up. Oh. <laughs> but the current director, she's bad at it. Oh. She can only get five before she started failing. So she reached out to the AI team and was like, I need help. <laughs> and they, and they figured mapped. It out. Modern problems require modern yeah. solutions. She don't care about them, them geese. I can't wait for the augmented reality where you hold your phone up and it gives you the AR bubble over the goose. And it's like, this, go, this goose has traveled 2,000 miles today and has done all, or 2,000 miles in its lifetime. And it was born here. And here are all the people that know about it. Blah, blah, yeah. blah. Here's all the people well, it's killed that we caught from the DNA. They point out for the previous version of this was tracking darts. <laughs> so this is much more goose friendly to use the AI. And finally, we have a local interest story. A family of bobcats has seen near Glenwood High School as a warning to the high school, to smaller high school <laughs> students, stay indoors. <laughs> it's a whole, I, I've never seen a whole family of them like that. I've only ever seen one. They're just frolicking around out on the grounds. <laughs> I'd be so tempted to try to pet them. Yeah. Well, I know I can't. It'd be, I mean, imagine how many high schoolers are in there who are like, this would be a great TikTok. Oh, my God. And I would watch it. I don't even like TikTok, but I'd watch a TikTok of someone petting a bobcat. If I could get a bobcat to go to sleep in my lap, I might just open up a TikTok account just for that. <laughs> a whole new YouTube channel, L1 Bobcats. <laughs> Streaming bobcat shenanigans 24-7. Sounds fun. Anyway, that's it for the week. I don't have anything else to say. Do you guys have any closing thoughts? Uh... Nope. That was an organic segue to the end of the show. Happy weekend. Relax. Try not to like freak out <laughs> as we descend into even more chaos and madness. Thanks for watching, hanging out, we liking, appreciate and it. subscribing, and whatever else it is that you do. Don't trust anybody else. <laughs> All right, catch you later. Bye.